بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled Towards the Origin and to all those who will be joining via our Facebook page, YouTube channel and live streaming via our analyst website. In the challenging world that we live in today, we are faced with numerous challenges, trials and tribulations. There is happiness and sadness. It's part of our life. But what do we do to enhance ourselves, to better ourselves? And as Muslim, we look forward for success, not only in this world, but in the hereafter. But we all base, or in general, base it upon our good work, upon our hard work, hard effort. But as Muslim, what should we do? Should we not rely on dua? Should we not do dua first and then continue with our good work and efforts and hard work? Because at the end of the day, it's Allah's will, Allah's mercy that will allow us not only to be successful in this world, but in the hereafter. Therefore, our today's topic for discussion is supplication, the weapon of the believer. Now, what do we mean by the term dua? Is there any etiquette of dua? What are the special timings of dua being accepted? And most importantly, we do notice now that many of us or many of our viewers, we do get a lot of feedback that why are our dua not answered? All of this and many more, inshallah, we'll be discussing in our tonight's program. And to discuss this topic, we have with us a very renowned scholar who is a graduate from Al Azhar University, Egypt, who is the respected Imam and Khatib of Regent's Park Masjid, Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, first of all, thank you again very much for joining us so late at night. You welcome. Barakallahu alaikum. Barakallahu alaikum. reward you. Um, now, our topic for today, as I've said in the introduction, it's dua or supplication, which is the um, weapon of the believer. Now, a lot of the time we get confused or we don't understand the actual meaning of dua. Now, salah is also a form of dua. Or a lot of people will say we have to raise hand and then supplicate. That's a form of dua. Now, what is the actual term of dua? What do we understand by dua? Jazakumullah <laughs> khairan. الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي أكمل لنا ديننا وأتم علينا نعمته ورضي لنا الإسلام دينا اللهم رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد after praising Allah and sending salams and salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad Rasulullah salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi is the final messenger and slave of Allah the Almighty. Um, du'as, supplications. Um, uh, Brother Qamar uh, just asked that, uh, what do we understand from the word dua? Now, when we look at the word dua in Arabic dictionary, we find the meaning of the dua is ma yubtahalu wa yutadarra'u ila Allah min al qawl. What we urge from Allah uh, with the maximum level of humiliation <laughs> and humbleness. And we ask directly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verbally to give us, to grant us, to protect us, and so on and so forth. So, ma yubtahalu wa yutadarra'u ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min al-qawl. Yes, du'as uh, have different meanings in Arabic. Uh, salah, uh, the literal meaning of salah is du'a as well. The literal meaning of salah is du'a. However, uh, uh, salah uh, has a meaning in, in, in Islamic terminology as well just the way we pray, the so starting from takbir and then ending with, with mm -hmm. salam. So this is the real salah. But yes, dua is directly asking Allah the Almighty, urging him uh, with uh, all humiliation and humbleness to give us what we want as long as they're permissible and halal. Now, uh, the before, reason- Before yeah. moving on to that, um, yeah. next uh, to, um, section, mm -hmm. the the connection that I want to establish mm. here is in dua, mm. we have rightly said that it is, uh, salah is also part of, it's a dua. Mm -hmm. Now in salah, we're actually asking Allah mm. for help, for forgiveness. Absolutely correct. So, so it, contains some, it contains some duas as well. 
Yes, but when we say the word dua is directly, we are, hmm. uh, we are, we are hmm. making dua separately and especially okay. uh, verbally from Allah the Almighty. That's what we mean when we say the dua um, itself. Um, now, at the moment, at this moment of the world, we are actually suffering tremendously in many different ways, uh, starting from personal level, from the family level, to international level. Uh, Muslim Ummah, as Ummah, we are also suffering. So we have got, uh, as you have mentioned, Brother Qamar, we are going through lots of trials and tribulations. Al-Ibtila, uh, al Al-Imtihan. We are going through a lot of trials and tribulation at this time. As an individual, uh, as a society, as a community, and as an Ummah as well. So when we're, wherever, wherever we look at, uh, at this time of the world, we see uh, that Muslims are actually suffering uh, in, in every part of the world. Uh, now, the question remains, how much do we ask Allah the Almighty to, to solve our problems, to protect us, to give us the stability, peace and harmony? Very rightly said. Now, a lot of the time we do notice, in general again, that we take or do dua something which is at the last resort after we have used all of our efforts, yep. hard work, quality, right. skills that has been That's bestowed right. upon us. Right. And then when we fail, then we turn back to Allah yeah, subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala that I want yes. such a So Muslims, as Muslims today, we, ha we, we our trust in Allah the Almighty reduced. The reliance on Allah, tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually has, has, has been reduced quite badly. So therefore when we see like we have some illnesses, we may fall ill or we may fall sick, uh, or maybe we have a problem generally, then what we do, we try and find the solution, every kind of solution on this earth. And that then, existed. yeah, that exists. But then we go here and there, we go everywhere, we go around, and nothing really happens. Certain illnesses, certain sickness, we go ev everywhere, every direction, but still the problems are there. Still the, 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 the difficulties are there. Um, so, uh, so, so that really shows that our reliance. So, for example, we see some people, as soon as they fall ill, they will call the doctor, they will make an appointment, they will which, which busy, is the right direction. Yeah, they will busy themselves sh instantly with the things on this earth, rather than asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala first and foremost, then taking the necessity measurement. You see, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, there is a hadith about him which says that إذا حزبه أمر فزع إلى الصلاة The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he had any difficulties, the first thing he would do, he would go and stand in front of Allah. The first thing, before coming to find a solution uh, on this earth. Um, so now we live in a time where we are occupied quite badly. We've got so much busyness. We've got these, we've got that, we've got business, we've got children, we've got family. We've got commitments. all commitments and, and appointments and, and all those things are actually making us forgetful of even asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no time for us to ask, make dua to Allah the Almighty to solve our problems because the actual solution have to be right there above uh, in, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which doesn't mean that we don't take the necessity measurement. Uh, we have to take whatever needs to be, we have to do whatever needs to be done here. But the first and foremost thing that we have to ask Allah the Almighty, the Creator, and the one who gives problem, he can remove the problems. Yeah. Now, that means that we have to set our priorities right. It's yeah. nothing wrong with, if it's say for instance, an example of inst um, that you have given, if someone falls ill, calling doctors, which is the right thing to do, but yep. the priority. Absolutely. Said, that so we, we, we as Muslims, someone falls ill, someone has a problem, someone, someone going through some tough times. So first thing we do, we turn ourselves towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask him for the right guidance because at times we might be going to a place for the solution that might not be the correct place so therefore we ask Allah first to guide us to the right direction okay. and then we fall into the correct right direction and context and then our problems will be easily solved by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we live in a time we don't have time to even make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but duas are important. Um, when we look at uh, the Quranic texts, um, the ayat of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks directly about dua. He gives us, uh, us instruction. some instruction 
regarding duas. So Allah Taala says in Surah Ghafir, in verse 60, Allah the Almighty says, "وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ." So Allah the Almighty says in this very beautiful verse, He says, "The end." Um, your Lord says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ Your Lord say, says, اُدْعُونِي Make dua to me, invoke to me, make supplication to me, ask me. Because dua is a sign of humbleness. When somebody asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's being humble. And Allah the Almighty describes this, the one who doesn't ask him, he's an arrogant because he is not in need of his creator Lord. You see, um, I've, uh, I was quite uh, curious when I heard uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, the Cassius Clyde boxer, he said that, um, that he used to think that he is the greatest. He said that, you know. And he said it. Uh, and he said it, rim, uh, like, it like, repeatedly, I'm the greatest. But then he says, when I was afflicted by a disease called Parkinson's disease, that's when I understood I'm not the greatest. There's somebody else who's greatest. Allah the Almighty, he is the greatest. So he understood the greatness belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, Udu'uni, make dua to me. Ask me for whatever you want to have in, in this world. Astajib lakum, I will answer to your du'as, astajib lakum. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, Allah the Almighty, He is telling us and promising that He's gonna, He will accept our du'as. Inna ladhina yastakbiruna an ibadati, and those who arrogantly turn away from me and don't ask me, doesn't ask me, and those who do not ask me, ibadati sayadkhuluna jahannama dakhirin, they will enter into the fire of hell while being humiliated. Those who do not ask me, they will enter into the fire of hell with humiliation. This is very truly uh, and rightly you have said that mm. asking dua with humiliation. If I relate it to the worldly affairs even, mm. when we look for job, yeah. when we ask for something from a person who is on an influential state or a position of power, mm -hmm. what do we do? We ask them with petition. full humility, or petition, petition yeah. or full yeah. humbleness. Yes, yes, do we yes. show our arrogance there? No, of course no, not. We don't, because we not. know if we do show our arrogance, the thing that we're looking forward to achieve mm -hmm. will be destroyed, will be Absolutely damaged, correct. won't be achieved. And therefore, um, when we start dua, it is recommended that we start praising Allah the Almighty first. You see, in Surah Al-Fatiha, it is dua, it's a form of dua. So when we say to Allah the Almighty, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, show me the straight path. That is the most important dua, being on the straight path on this, in this world. Um, so we repeat that in every rakah, every digit of our salah. But we start off with praising Allah. We say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All the praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the most gracious and most merciful, Maliki Yawmiddin, Master of the Day of Judgment. And then we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينُ We only worship you and we only seek help from you. Then we say, Wallah, show us the straight path. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ The most important dua that ever we can make to keep Allah the Almighty, to keep us on the straight path. When we look at uh, another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ if my servants ask for me and ask me, then let them know that indeed I'm really near. I'm close. Qareeb. Amar bunda yazudi amare dua khroin. Amar 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 khse dua khroin. Tawazu arshate binoyat arshate dua khroin. Taile ami ekdom nikoto borti. Ami ekdom pashiasi. Inni qareeb. Uji buda wata dagi ida dagan. I answer to the duas of people if they. Uh, if they ask me. So, ujibu da'wat al da'i idha da'an. There is an important hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, mentioned in uh, the Sunan at Tirmidhi, rahimahullah. And the hadith is on the authority of Abdullah bin Abbas, a famous hadith and very beneficial, contains lots and lots of good information in this hadith. So, Allah the Almighty, uh, uh, the Messenger of Allah, um, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says that, Kuntu khalfan nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day I was behind Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqala ya gulam inni wa'allimuka kalimat. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was interested to teach him some beautiful words of wisdom. So he said, O gulam, O beautiful, O beloved boy. See, look at the address, how he's addressing 
the, the young companion buys him, Ya Ghulam. Ghulam is a, is, a, is, a, is a lovely, is a loving word. So he's saying, Ya Ghulam, oh beloved son, oh boy, I would like to teach you some words of wisdom. Then he says, Ihfadillaha yahfadhuk. Safeguard Allah and Allah will safeguard you. Protect Allah and Allah will protect you. What is safeguarding Allah? Safeguard the commandments of Allah. Abide by his abide by his compulsory actions and refrain from the prohibitions. And then he says, um, Safeguard Allah and you'll find Allah the Almighty right in front of you, is there for you. And then he says, If you ask, if you would like to ask for anything, and if you want to ask, then ask Allah. If you want to supplicate, then supplicate Allah. If you want to ask, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He is the one who can give. Now, question may arise, can we ask um, anybody else for anything? Yeah, when you question, say, yeah. that, that's one of the questions, but then yeah. the other question could be also mm. simple that way. We, we need, like one of the arguments we hear, we need a wasila. Mm. Now, people sometimes use a lay term example mm. of if you have to reach to a, a person who is in a higher state of mm. power or position, mm. you can't go to him directly. Mm. So you have to go through via channels mm -hmm. or via source. Mm -hmm. Now, such sort of examples are then attributed mm. that instead of making dua directly, you need some sort of wasila or some sort mm -hmm. of, you have to go through some sort of saint mm -hmm. or th yep. something along that line. So you see, what um, we suggest? This is an important question. Uh, scholars of Islam differed in the word tastawassul or wasila. Uh, initially, I was saying that we are not allowed to um, uh, ask anybody in this world about anything that they cannot provide, they cannot give. Such as we're not allowed to go and ask somebody, give me a child. I mean, I, I'm not having children. So, so he cannot give because this is the source of children is from Allah, but he can make dua for you. He can supplicate for you. Um, so we're not allowed to ask certain things that people cannot give in this world. How, beyond people's beyond capacity. Beyond their capacity. Yeah. But we're allowed to ask people for help that they can give us. With the, with, by keeping in mind that the original help is coming from Allah. Hmm. So now I ask you for help, Brother Qamar. You will not be able to help me unless Allah the Almighty allows you to help me Correct. and enables you to help me. So the original helper is Allah, but you're just a, you're just a mean. So, so everybody else is mean, but the original help is coming from Allah the Almighty. So we ask only Allah the Almighty. But the question about tawassul or wasila, um, scholars of Islam that differed, uh, there is a huge debate on that. Um, some scholars, they say, uh, 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 There is a Quranic verse which says that Allah the Almighty won't punish the people as long as, O oh, Prophet Muhammad, you are there. So as long as you are there, Allah the Almighty won't punish these people. So uh, being somebody there as a as person or individual, sometimes Allah the Almighty can have mercy on, 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 on the other people. So um, wasila, uh, asking, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with the wasila of someone or through the intercession of someone, some scholars, just to cut it short, some scholars, they permitted as long as we believe as long as we don't have belief that they're the one who's helping us. By the will of Allah, by the mercy of Allah, and because they were good and uh, righteous people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have mercy on us. Um, so, going back to the original issue that we ask only Allah the Almighty in this world. And if you ask help from Allah, then ask uh, uh, from Him only. Um, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith, in a famous hadith, inna dua huwa al-ibada. Inna dua huwa al-ibada. So dua itself is a form of worship. And jazakallah khair for that. We'll, at a very good point that we'll stop here. It's just for a time for a short break, but okay. we'll continue right after where we have stopped. Okay, My dear viewers, we have discussed and heard the importance of dua. We have, heard, we have heard from the Sheikh that it's one of the powerful tools that a believer can use that a believer can use not only to achieve success in the world but in the hereafter. We'll continue our discussion. Do stay with us. Do stay tuned with us. We'll be right back after a short break. Wassalamu alaikum.